Hi folks, my name is Adam and I like to make things. Today I'm going to show you how I made this awesome tabletop diorama of Avatar Aang going full Avatar. The very first step is making the armature itself. What I use is a small printout which lets me at least get the general body shape up to snuff and then I can start working from there. Next step is adding in the green stuff. I always want to add green stuff onto the armature just because I need something for the Sculpey to stick to. Sculpey doesn't like to stick to non-porous material, so without a better base underneath, it won't actually stick to the armature. The trick here is putting really thin layers over the entirety of this green stuff before it starts to harden, and then I can go back through and refine shapes. Because his head is going to be sort of the focal point of this because, you know, blue lines and all that, um, I'm going to start from the top down. Generally, I like to add more than I need and cut off as I go. And then I'll use my ruler here to measure to make sure that the proportions are relatively similar. He's got a bit of a funny body shape, so normally you'd go, uh, I think it's seven heads to the height of a body. But with Avatar Aang, probably because he's a child or because of sort of the cartoon styling, I think it's six heads to a body length according to everything else. Here I am just uh, refining some of the shapes, so I will pull it in the direction that the muscle would be pulling. So the striated chest muscle will go towards the arms and then I'll refine his bum. Um, and here I am just making the ears, which will be a couple of tiny circles pressed onto the side of his head. These will line up with the uh, eyebrows. This is the bottom of the ears line up with the eyes, with the pupils, I think is how it works. I can't remember. Uh, generally, you can look into sculpting anatomy fairly easily. There's lots of resources for it. Once that's all done, the last thing I really need to focus on as far as the body's concerned are the legs. So I'll use just a bit of green stuff I've already baked the entire body, so it's kind of my save point. I don't need to worry about crushing anything. Um, and then a couple dots for the knees, and that's his legs done. I'm not going to bother adding any feet, because he's floating on a gust of wind. So I don't need to fuss about with feet. The hands will be a couple of green stuff blobs, which I'll then press into relatively handy shapes. And then I cut some fingers using the green stuff, apply those on one at a time, and then once they're sort of in place, I can go about uh, smoothing them out, blending them into that original bit of green stuff, um, and then getting rid of his sort of arthritic look here. It's a bit of a finicky process, but if you take your time, make sure that it's done properly. Uh, it'll make a big difference at the end. The hands are going to be a fairly important part in the entire thing, so making sure that they all look smooth and clean is important. Same thing for the other hand. I do the entire hand before adding the thumb, and then I will, as the green stuff starts to cure a little bit harder, I can position them so that the fingers and the uh, thumb are sort of splayed out in a natural position. Finally, last touches will be giving him some forearms, filling in the gap between the biceps and the wrist. Again, just a bit more green stuff. It means I don't need to bake it. I don't want to put raw, uh, uncovered green stuff in the oven just in case it starts to bubble. Uh, that's sort of how you get minor blemishes all over the place, and it's easiest to avoid that just by letting the green stuff cure on its own. To make the body of the wave, I'll use this old soup jar plastic thing. It's nicely curved, and all I need to do is cut it into a couple of triangular shapes, which I can then use the heat gun and some glue to warp into sort of the shape I'm after. The rest of the body is going to be using hot glue. Uh, generally, hot glue will dry semi-opaque, so it's not ideal for doing water. But because this is going to be a wave in motion, it's going to be pretty opaque anyways. It'll be clear enough that it's obviously a liquid, but once we paint it up, add a little bit of color to it, and add foam, the hot glue will actually look quite uh, watery and wave-like, especially with being able to shape it using the hot glue gun's tip. I'll go back over the entirety of the wave using some heavy gel medium, 
what this will do is give it a bit more texture, give it a bit more wave-like appearance. I'll also go over the edges so that it isn't quite so smooth everywhere. I tried a couple different ways to make the flame, first using hot glue and then using melted plastic. Um, finally, I ended up just doing the same thing I did for the Ragnaros sculpture, which was a little bit of wire jammed into some clay, which I can then smoosh into a relatively flame-like shape, and then go back through with my ball stylus and start to add that wave, or sorry, that flame sort of appearance to it. It's a fairly quick process, and it's really satisfying once you see it all come together. Once I've used the large stylus, I can go back through with the little one just to finalize all the little bits and pieces. I want the entire diorama to rest on sort of a rocky outcropping, so I'll use some foam just to build it up along the bottom, and it also makes it easier to stick everything into. A little hot glue will stick that in place, and then I'll mix up a little plaster, which I can coat over the entire thing like a delicious cake. Once that's done, I can start to determine where the pizzas are going to lie. I want to do this before it's dried, just so that I get a spot that I can reposition the flames, and that way I'll know how much the flames are going to overhang. The next step will be making the little rocks, the bits of earth that come flying out of the ground, because he's going to be doing all of the elements at once. So I want to make sure that I've got some rocks shooting out of the base. I'll use the same foam as before, and then I'll just sort of chop and carve and make them look a little bit more realistic. A little less square and flat everywhere. To give the illusion of momentum, I want to add some large boulders flying off of the earth spikes that are coming out of the ground. So a couple thin wire strips stuck into it will make them semi-levitate, and you won't really notice until you get close and look at it. So once it's all glued together, primed, and thrown on, I can start to paint it up. So a nice dark gray throughout the entirety of the base, which I can then go over with some lighter colors, and then the top will get a brown, earthy tone. I'll use a nice brown, earthy tone again to cover the rocks, because I want them to look like they're coming out of the earth, so they're soil more than anything. And then I'll use that same color to go over the little boulders that are flying off as well. Once they're all finished, I can get working on the wave. So I'll use some blue, very watered down blue to cover the entire thing. And then I'll go back over everything with a little bit of just pure white to add to that foam and movement look that I'm going for. Once that's finished, I can mix up a batch of glossy Mod Podge and some snow flock, I guess you'd call it. So I'll mix that together, get a nice foamy consistency, which will then go on to basically all of the edges. I'm going to put this on quite liberally everywhere. Uh, this will, when it hardens, be as hard as the rest of the material, but it'll stay white and foamy, so it'll look really like this wave is moving out of his hands, like it's got a lot of momentum and it's shooting towards the earth. The flames will get a base coat of bright yellow, covering the entire thing quite liberally everywhere. Then when that's done, I'll go over and do a dry brush of orange and then dark red, to give it a bit of uh, heat throughout. Finally, little tips will get blackened to add to the final texture, and then we can get painting on the actual avatar himself. Pretty easy to do this one, just a base coat of skin everywhere, yellow for the pants and then red on his belt, and then with a very fine paint brush, I will start to do his various lines. Uh, so his blue arrow on top, which I'll do in a dark blue first so that I can get the general area everywhere. And then I'll go back through with a lighter blue to give it sort of a glowy avatar state appearance to it. It's fairly slow going because I don't want to make too many broad strokes. I want to make sure it all looks proper along the way. So do it up his back, along his legs, along his wrists, and down into his hands. 
Then the final step will be finishing the base itself. So a wash of black into all the creases to really highlight the various gaps and add a bit more dimension to it. And then of course, some fun dry brush over the top of the lighter brown everywhere. Cover the stones in a fairly thick dry brush. I don't know if you can call it a dry brush at that point. So we'll do the same thing to the boulders. And then for the edge of the base, I'll go very, very thick with a much lighter gray just to give it a grayer appearance. I really only wanted that dark, dark gray as almost like a, a poor man's wash underneath. And then a final dry brush on all the edges uh, throughout the boulders with a bone white, almost a pure white, just to really give everything a nice appearance at the end of it. One of the last steps in terms of building will be to add the static grass onto the base itself. So I'll coat the whole thing in thinned out Mod Podge. It's just uh, Mod Podge with a bit of water added to it, which will help the conductivity for the static grass itself. I use a two millimeter here for no reason other than it happened to be what I had on hand. It was the greenest of the grasses I have and I wanted something really green to contrast all the other colors. So I'll coat the whole thing and then once that's coated, I'll go back through with a little brush to make sure that I get all the grass out of the boulders shooting out of the earth. With that, the base is essentially done. All I need to do is wait for it to dry and then while it's drying, I'll go through and press down a grass a little bit here and there just to give it a less uniformly vertical appearance. I want to add a bit of mud and dirt shooting out of where the base of the boulders are coming out of. So the same thing I'll do with the foam on the waves. I'll mix a little Mod Podge with some dirt and sand and then press that into the base of the boulders shooting out of the earth. And then with my tweezers and some sculpting tools, I'll tweeze it out and pull it into a more explosive sort of a look to it. And then finally, a little bit of dry brush with the light brown will blend it in with the rest of the turf. And then the base is done and it's looking really good just as a landscape by itself. I really kind of like it and it makes me think that maybe I should be doing more just standard landscapes instead of entire scenes with other stuff in them. But for now it's attaching the pieces which is a pretty straightforward process. Little CA glue will hold the avatar into the middle of the piece and I want to make it look like the fire has scorched the earth a little bit, so I'll dry brush some black over the static grass before attaching that afterwards. Before I do any of that though, I want to add his little windy, cloudy thing, which is just some cotton ball that I have unraveled, and then I'll tweeze it into sort of a cloudy shape. A little bit of hot glue into the middle of that will stick it directly onto where his feet should be, hence why we didn't bother making feet before. And then I'll spiral it around the aluminium so that you can't actually see the sort of pillar holding him up at all. So it'll look like he's floating on the cloud. A little bit more between the rocks adds to the appearance. And then we'll start to attach the rest of the pieces. So hot glue into that patch where I've left for the flames, making sure that it lines up within the palm of his hand. And then basically the same thing to attach the wave onto the other side. What I've done to stick it is a little hot glue on the bottom and then hot glue directly out of his palm, just a very small amount to the tip of the wave, adds to the appearance and holds it in place. Overall, it uh, looks really sharp. So then the final stage to finish everything out will be adding those little boulders flying out of the earth. So I'll put them in wherever I think they look best. And that's basically it done. Once these are in, he is finished. I hope you liked the video, I had a hell of a time making this one, so if you liked it, leave a comment, 
uh, hit the subscribe, like the video, doing all these things helps me out a ton because it puts me into YouTube's algorithm and makes sure that I know people wanna see these, so I'll just keep making them. Otherwise, if you wanna see more like this, we'll, uh, we'll see you back here next week. Cheers.